there's three reasons right now that I believe Tarkov is on its last legs. Cheating, bugs, and the direction that BSG is pushing the game. Let's get in and talk about each of these three reasons and talk a little bit about how I think that it can be fixed, solved, and or changed to make it just a more fun and enjoyable game for everybody. Not just streamers, not just the standard player. I think that there are changes in all three of these categories that genuinely need to happen or Tarkov is going to die. So let's get in and talk about it right now. So let me start with the biggest reason that I believe that there are issues that only BSG can really control by listening to their community. They did this once this wipe already with the recoil changes. The majority of the community thought that recoil changes was going to be a really great idea. And overall, I think it was great for the game. However, BSG is also making decisions that aren't necessarily great for the game. For example, let's begin with one that really isn't controversial whatsoever, uh, and that was LUT filters, or like basically using some of those other softwares to be able to see a little bit better in game. Personally, I didn't have an issue with this whatsoever. I didn't think that it was a problem. Most people are playing around with post effects in game, using graphics cards, like internal uh, availability to change their screen, or they were using those LUT filters. It doesn't solve anything. It's not an unfair advantage because everyone can do it. I understand that they're doing it to stop external software, which can confuse Battle Eye, which is fine. But they actually went and banned that and then said that anyone else using it is going to be banned. That is an okay step, but I think the bigger issue is how, or how bad lighting is in Tarkov to begin with. The fact that we have to use stuff like that to be able to see is the problem that needs to be addressed. And until they address that issue, they shouldn't be getting rid of the availability for players to be able to solve that themselves. Now let's move on to one that's been a little bit more controversial as of late, which is the RMT ban or like the RMT stringency, right? We saw two streamers both get banned um, because of RMT which if they were RMTing, I wouldn't have an issue with. The problem is that they weren't. Uh, we have confirmation from BSG, or at least speculation according to one peg, that they were banned for playing with the same player and that it wasn't a ban because of picking up an abnormally large amount of gear. Now I have seen the screenshot of uh, one of the streamers getting a raid bag full of slicks. I don't agree with that either. I don't think that players or streamers should be able to get something like that at all. It's an unfair advantage. It's not fun for people who are going to go against that streamer for the next six raids or something like that, however long those three slicks last him. Um, and I do feel like that's an unfair advantage. However, viewer kits are both fun for the viewer that's doing it. It's fun for the audience to watch it happen. And it's also fun for the streamer and it creates a sense of community. Now, the problem that I see with this is that with them being banned for queuing up with someone who had done RMT in the past, this means that every LFG is essentially useless. There's no way for every player to scan who they're playing with and know if they've ever been accused of RMT. There's no warnings from BSG. And there's really no clarification on what counts as RMT. If I bring back my buddy's kit five raids in a row because he kept dying, am I going to get in trouble? If my buddy drops me a gun because I asked him to build me one that I can't get yet, is that going to be a problem for me? If I bring my buddy a gun that he can't technically buy yet, does that count as RMT even though there's no money being exchanged whatsoever? I just want to help out my friend. Along with that, what if someone finds a graphics card and I needed one for a quest and he drops it for me in raid? Does that count as RMT for me? because I picked it up even though my buddy was the one to find it. We don't have any clarification or understanding of what RMT actually is, what flags RMT. So there's no way for us to actually build any communication or any plan on how to not trigger the RMT flag. Basically what this has led to is no one should be looking for group from people that they don't know. No one should be taking viewer kits. No one should be dropping kits. No one should be doing anything that could potentially trigger the RMT 
system. This has destroyed the Tarkov community, in my opinion, or at least will destroy the Tarkov community, in my opinion. And this really leads to point number two, which is one that we're all very familiar with, and that's the cheating problem within Tarkov. And I think there's a really great way to potentially fix this one as well. As for the first one of BSG pushing the game in a direction that I personally think isn't great for the player base or the community, it really just comes to BSG listening to the community and doing what's best for all the players involved. So let's jump into the cheating aspect and talk about how I think that the cheating problem can be mostly fixed in Tarkov. As for cheating in Tarkov, the only way that I realistically see a fix that would work for everybody is a replay system. Now, before everyone starts screaming about how awful a replay system would be for Tarkov, hear me out for a minute. Have any of you guys ever played Rainbow Six Siege? Rainbow Six Siege has a post-match system where you are able to see a replay of the entire game. What if BSG were to implement a system where you could see from every other player's perspective what happened that raid? Personally, I think that would be a great way to, one, avoid the biggest problem that I hear when we talk about potentially implementing a replay system, which is we don't want people to start calling out where everybody is, which I completely agree with. I don't want to kill a player, have them watch the kill replay and say he's an X spot right? Nobody wants that. So that solves that problem. And two, we can actually see how sus a death was. For example, I could input a clip of me getting one tapped randomly. And is it, is it a cheating clip? No one would technically know. But if I can see it from the other player's perspective on what happened, it's a lot easier for me to be able to tell whether or not that player was cheating. Along with that, Let's be honest, I would probably watch a couple other players' perspectives as well. You could watch someone that went into resort and happened to sprint directly to a Letix while skipping every other possible Letix spawn in the area. Maybe they only knew about that one, but that's a way for everybody to be able to look at that and see whether or not that player is potentially cheating or using like an ESP for loot or something along those lines. But as of right now, there's not a really great way to report cheaters. And while I do think that this Discord could potentially be a great idea, I don't necessarily see it solving anything other than God mode or flying cheaters who kill you. 95% of the time, those cheaters are not going to kill you. And the reason for that is because they know that they're blatant. Most of the time, the God mode cheaters are just walking around to try to find loot. Flying cheaters are just looking to stay out of your line of sight. Now, sure, if that cheater kills you, I'm glad that they're getting banned. But it doesn't solve the issue of less blatant cheating, where it's an aimbot while they're not flying and not in god mode, which is a very real possibility. Uh, for example, I got smacked by a Mosin down in reserve today, and I'm pretty sure it was a cheater. But I have no idea how to tell. I hardly ever report someone for cheating when I play because I never know. Unless I can see a god mode stance where they're walking on one leg and sliding around, or I happen to look up in the sky and I see someone flying who immediately one taps me, there's no way for me to 100% know if it was a cheater or an invisible player or something else. And speaking of invisible players, that brings us to point number three, which is the bugs within Tarkov. And let's start that right now. Finally, and this is the one that isn't, in my opinion, going to kill Tarkov necessarily, but it is probably the next biggest thing that is adding to the frustration of players. For example, I mentioned the invisibility glitch. I've been playing with a group of friends and some other people, um, and along with that, we've, be, we've been spawning invisible to each other in multiple raids. We've also been having it where we'll turn invisible to each other mid-raid, and it leads to a lot of issues. It's unfun, it leads to frustration when you have to restart at the start of every raid, 
And along with that, of course, audio is completely screwed. On interchange, it sounds like someone who is two floors above me is still somehow directly on top of me while I'm in the underground and there by tech light. Now, these are things that will be fixed with time, but it's also not fun when you die to an invisible player, or you can't tell where someone is, or you can't hear anything. And these are adding to the frustrations that the community is having with other things, such as the direction of Tarkov and the cheating problem. And so the only way to really fix this one is to one, allow BSG the time to make the changes needed to fix these bugs, but two, is for BSG to find a way to fix the other two. To sum up everything that we've talked about, I feel as if cheating, bugs, and the direction of Tarkov in general is what is killing Tarkov at the moment and leading to so much frustration for players. To fix the cheating problem, I believe that the best way to do so would be to implement some sort of post-raid replay system where people can actually see what has gone on and then as for the general direction of Tarkov, BSG needs to communicate with us more. They need to let us know what's happening, what they're working on, what they see. And along with that, they also need to listen to the community because at the end of the day, the community in mass is what is going to lead Tarkov to a direction that works. Not every single decision should be dictated by BSG for what they want for this game. While I understand that's what they, they want this to be a realistic, hardcore type shooter, it's also important that it's fun and that people want to play it. Everybody's paid to beta test this game. And while I understand that it's a beta and these things take time, a beta and being a beta tester means we should know what's going on. We should have some input into what makes it a better game. And when things aren't going well, and they're fixing something or they're trying to fix something, they need to communicate with us. They also need to be clear in what is and isn't acceptable for certain things that you can do in game. And all in all, I feel like those are the things that we need to really push BSG to fix. None of this is going to change unless we talk about it. None of this is going to change unless we force BSG to do it. At the end of the day, this is our game, and this is the game that we all love and enjoy. And we all want what's best for it. Differing opinions is fantastic, because the more that we can talk about it, the more that we can find a way to make this game work for a larger group of people, and for a group of people that really truly love and enjoy Tarkov overall. So those are some of the suggestions that I have I would love to hear about the suggestions that you guys have as well on how we can fix Tarkov. Also, I stream Monday through Saturday pretty much every day at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time over on Twitch, same name, Sula Ricchetti. So please come over and let me know what you guys thought about this video and what you guys think would help Tarkov as well. And drop that below in the comments. I'd love to have that conversation here too. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace out.